what's up guys and of course welcome to our VPL week 8 battle of course against Edinburgh Knights or Blue Sea and yeah no team analysis this this week and it is sadly due to actually work how about that never heard that story before but I simply haven't been able to so I'll try to go over him a bit and of course what Blue Sea is bringing and has because he definitely didn't bring the team I was thinking he was gonna bring he has a team with both Megalatios and Scissor so you can bet your sweet ass that that was exactly what I was going for. I decided to design with that team in mind. I needed to design with that team in mind because that has a potential of, of course, killing me and knocking me out. So I'm bringing, of course, Drapion with uh, Shukaberry. Uh, then we have um, Cobalion with um, also Shukaberry. It was supposed to be Expert Bell, but Shukaberry actually this time. And Hidden Power uh, Ice to able to 2 hit KO Gligar. And basically this mon wins me the game basically, he has so many mods it doesn't take on it well, but um, like I said, he brought something else. And then we have Dayenshi, Diamond Storm and um, I see Diamond Storm and uh, Moonblast with Rock Polish and uh, basically Protect. Tauros, Flamethrower, Ice Beam and um, Shea Force with Rock Climbers and Headbutt. Oh, he has a Gengar too, which he didn't decide to bring of course to this battle. Uh, so, Tornadoes is also a bit of a um, mix set here. And with, of course, Hurricane, Heat Wave, U Turn, and Knockoff. Uh, with, of course, Assault Vest. But yeah, it basically is the mod that can take on any matchup and do something with it. Uh, it had to be timid for this matchup due to him actually having Sneasel. So, Knockoff is not a 2 hit KO, for example, on Gengar. But if I get a life orb away, then that shouldn't necessarily matter. And, of course, Sneasel is close to KO'd if it is a life orb set um, with Heat Wave. And of course, they were jealoused with, I do believe, Colberberry, uh, Will O Wisp, Scald, Shadow Ball, and Recover. So, very, very, very standard. Um, nothing really to it. Uh, Mons that were clearly didn't make was Scallipede, which, looking for this matchup, would have been extremely nice. Uh, hits everything super hard. So, kind of missed out on that one. But then again, I designed with, of course, a team in mind of him bringing not at least his OU Mons. But from the matchup alone, I felt that, alright, I can probably relax. This is not going to be a very tough game for me. I should be able to push him down with little to no issue. Uh, I'm predicting, of course, his lead to be Gigalith. And I'm going to start with Drapion. Uh, mainly because I have Shukaberry, but also because I can go for a knockoff. And potentially take away his potential cost up berry if he decide to use that. So, with all of this said, let's go. So right, from the get-go I do get an ideal switch situation because, like I said here, uh, due to him not bringing the mons that, of course, Draping was built for, Draping is pretty much a very, very sackable mod from, well, turn 1. So I'm gonna go for the knockoff as we see, of course, Assault Vest. That's a good thing as he, of course, doesn't go for an earthquake, which had me just, oh, really? <laughs> so anyway, I decided to try to save him. Basically go into Jelly and see if he goes for Heavy Slam or something like that, stay trying to stay safe as he goes for superpower, uh, which is clearly alright, because that means that he's in a very tough spot. I decided here to go for a will o -Wisp, even if I knew that of course Blast was going to come in, at least I get the will o -Wisp and try to get some residual damage on a very, very early wall, and um, I was debating staying in, but he could have Toxic. I was so close to going for a double Willow, feeling that maybe he's trying to bait me for Sneasel, and I would really like Sneasel against Necromedusa. That would be the ideal situation since with Culverberry, I can take a knockoff. But I decided to switch out, which is a bit mixed there. And I'm gonna go to Balthasar here. Basically, here feeling that uh, if I'm gonna sack something, I can sack Balthasar. Uh, I did decide to stay in here uh, because, like I said, I really just wanted to have a free switching versus Blastoise, which of course didn't happen. So now I'm gonna go to Viralis, basically bait him to try to attack me with an eye shot. As he switches out, go to Jeeves, which of course is the Gligar, as I go for u turn because, you know, hell, I can't KO him from full. And um, Jeeves is gonna have a tough spot here, because I have the option to, of course, go for the better play. So, I'm gonna go back to Necromedusa, and feeling that Skulls should definitely be a 2 hit KO on it, plus he doesn't necessarily have any switch in outside of, of course, uh, his, uh, oh, what do you call it, Blastoise. So Skull doesn't do a jack shit, which shows me that, of course, it's uh, especially defensive and not defensive, which is both good and bad, but I'm going to decide here to go to Cabalion, because due to, of course, Earthquake, or um, his being burned, uh, my 5-4 shouldn't be able to be scared by it, 
as he actually goes for a U-turn. And first I was thinking, is this gonna send in, of course, a Lectavar that it might be Scarfed? But even if it's Scarfed due to me having Shuka Berry, I shouldn't be scared of Earthquake, so I can just go for close combat anyway, thinking that he would be Scarfed, as he's clearly not. And the thing is here, close combat is a one-hit KO. Now, I do get a crit here, but trust me, <laughs> it, it didn't matter. I was so surprised Blue Seed did that play, because it's not a switch-in. It's definitely not a switch in, but then again, he could have scared me off with, of course, the, um, like I said, um, the Scarf set. So anyway, here is where I do a massive misplay and stay in with 5 porn. This thing is Scarfed. I, I should have had it back in my mind. He brings Flood, yes, that has to be Scarfed. And here is where I make the second bad call. As he go for Moonblast, I was thinking... He knew if I was for a knockoff, he would just lose floor jazz. So I went for Hurricane, thinking that he was trying to, of course, switch out. As he doesn't do that, and I miss the Hurricane. And that is actually, I really can't stress it enough, pushing me to a bad spot. I need to go Necro Medusa. I need to get some residual damage on this thing. As Moonblast will be a close to 2 hit KO, but it's not a 2 hit KO, luckily. So I can pull off a Scald, or at least go for Recover, just basically stalling him out. As the second Moonblast comes here, and he gets a crit. And, um, yeah. I'm gonna be honest, guys. There is nothing now stopping this floor, guys, for just ruining all of my team. I, I got nothing now. I it's over. But at least we get, you know, the awesome transition. So yeah, that's the 4 victory in Blues' favor, and uh, yeah, my afterthoughts is gonna base around what the hell just happened, because I'm, I will be honest here, when I was going into this battle, I was going in with the mindset that there is no way he can win against me with that team, it's simply no way, and um, I was super cocky, um, didn't wave around my options all too much, and of course I did it directly after work, so maybe it was, you know, maybe one of the best state of course Wi-Fi battling I give him that but at the same time I did some pretty bad calls um definitely versus that floor yes. and um, it's all on me of actually losing so many things for one matchup because that definitely didn't need to happen uh, first of all of course I, I should have switched out of course Cobalion he has talked about this scoff floor yes said before so I knew that that was an option but I just yeah let's wave it uh, I had a chance of surviving but that was a small chance um, because I was thinking that, um, or actually I wasn't thinking, I think that was the reason. And then of course with Tornadoes, I really thought he knew that if I go for a knockoff, I win the game. Uh, because he can't knock me out and he loses the scarf, which means he has nothing on his team that I would speed my Tornadoes or and my DNG pretty much sweeps the team from that point on. I thought he knew that. Uh, I should have played much, much more predictable. I should definitely play predictable and just go for a safe knockoff. There was no ramification of me doing so, but I went for Hurricane anyway. And Hurricane missed, and um, like I said here, um, the Hurricane itself isn't a bad play anyway, uh, or that it misses, I mean, the bad plays that don't go for knockoff. Uh, but that's not the worst part, I have actually one more option, I do can get a little damage with, of course, Jelly Scent, though I was fi thinking of recovering Sol and basically see what the mid-max were, but um, it actually was, his max ma damage output was 47%, which means that I could survive, of course, one more Moonblast and survive with less than 10 HP, mind you, if you get a max roll, but I would survive it. But he gets a crit there, and that's basically wrapped, because that means I have nothing that can take uh, a hit in the Retalia, because I needed the energy to be at full HP, I needed at least Tauros to be at full HP, but definitely needed the energy at full HP. 
and I had no way of doing so. The Yen, she had a chance of one at KOing Florius, but uh, that was really all I had to go in with. I was switching Dianxia over Tauros from that point on because I really needed that residual damage. Because um, Sun Headbutt on, of course, and, or I mean Rock Climb from uh, Tauros would not want to KO it. And that would have been a much, much higher risk. Tauros could at least wave around it. But yeah, what I'm trying to say is I messed up big. I think um, Blue Sea took a shot in the dark and it definitely did work. I really can't say much more. He, he had a scarf set and it worked. Uh, I was thinking he was going to play Florius differently, and clearly that wasn't it, and it turned into a massive threat for me. So I do believe the thumbnail does it justice. And Blue Sea, thank you, of course, for that battle. I'm not salty about it. Um, like I said, when we talked, it wasn't necessarily... <laughs> the, the, the one I was mad at was myself. I was super, super disappointed, because I knew I had the game in my hand, and I basically I felt like I gave that away for thinking that you would try to um, maneuver around my tornadoes, which you clearly didn't care for. And I lose the battle for that, and that is just huge and kind of annoying for me. But, you know, that's the game we play. I, one more prediction, and, you know, playing the way I do, and, you know, we're pretty much wrapped up to lose. Um, so, if anything, I'm going to give you everything for Flodius. That clearly did work now, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, everybody that's been watching, thank you for doing just so. I hope you liked this battle, even though it was a very short game. Um, he got me, and he got me good. <laughs> so, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye.